So Georgia May has a system for determining my overall stress levels and to kind of give her a guide for what the day is going to bring at the shop. Now, when my hair is down, that means I have, you know, had some time to relax and actually have some self-care and we're going to have a more laid back day. When my hair is in a ponytail, as it most of the time is, I mean business, it's time to do the thing. And when my hair is in a bun, we are going to be working like crazy, crazy, crazy people all day long and it's not gonna stop and it's going to be intense. And the higher the bun, the higher the level of intensity. And she told me this a couple years ago and I went, huh, and uh, it kind of fits. And so my hair is in a bun today, so it's definitely one of those intense days. And I will tell you why it's one of those intense days in just a moment. But before I do, hi, I'm Mrs. Soap and Clay. Let's make stuff. How's it going, Sudzers? Welcome back to the channel. You are at Soap and Clay, where we make all the soapy things, and you are here for day 154, and we're not really making the soapy things today. We're making the bubble balmy things today. So we are doing the new line of uh, cupcake bath bombs for the fall season, and they're awesome. They're so much fun. You have cupcake on the bottom, and then the top, the frosting, is solid bubble bath, and they're a lot of fun to use, but the actual making of them it's pretty intense. There's multiple steps going on and to put a cherry on top, which is funny because these do have cherries on top of them or some of them do anyway. Uh, my children, the soap and clay kidlets, were helping out with this one. So they designed all four of these. They are all foodie themed, which kind of fall in line with the uh, emulsified sugar scrubs and they're delightful. But again, lots of work goes into these. There's a lot of different moving pieces at all times and having the soap and clay kidlets in with their awesome vision as well can get up to be a little bit stressful. So fun. And we're gonna go and check out the making of the cupcake bath bombs, which way more enjoyable to watch than to mass produce. So, you know, let's go check that out. It's like fall, you guys, and that means it's a uh, time for new versions of everything. So, you know, new soaps, new lotions, new lotion bars, new bath bombs, new bubble bombs. So today we're doing the, uh, the bubble bombs on the channel for the fall line. And I am so excited about these because they are so, like they're foodie, in ways that I have never really done foodie, which doesn't make a lot of sense because my bubble bombs have always been, you know, the cupcake bath bombs, right? So they always kind of look like food, but I don't always make them smell like food. And this time around, the soap and clay kidlets, because, you know, they are they are with me 24 seven, like all of the time. And so I let them select the scent blends for the fall bubble bomb line and they ended up very very foody as a result so that's awesome like I'm super super excited about this in you know really big awesome ways because they're really they're delightful the, I mean that the cupcake bath bombs the bubble bombs they're delightful anyway right so you have your your bottom part it's the uh, uh, the bath bomb and that's awesome it foams and fizzes and zips and zooms and you know scents the water and moisturizes your skin but then the top the frosting part of the cupcake that's your uh, your whipped solid bubble bath and I we've done a bubble bomb on the channel before and I gave you a recipe for a pipeable uh, whipped 
solid bubble bath thing. And yeah, so go back and watch that one if you want the recipe. And this, for the bath bomb portion, we've, we've done this on the channel before too. So lots of those videos giving you a good recipe for a nice stable recipe, be it, be it spherical or within a silicone mold or within what we're doing here, the cupcake liners. Now these are just standard cupcake liners that I picked up that are, I mean, they're bigger than kind of normal cupcakes, which is, you know, fun because yay, more fizzy fun, but you know, still standard when it's all said and done. Now, the last thing that goes into this is the citric acid. And you know, that's because that's the best time to put in citric acid when you're making bath bombs, really. And I have talked about that in other bath bomb videos on the channel as well. So again, go check those out. And, um, yeah, for this little teeny tiny batch of bombs, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get all six made out of this. Maybe. Maybe. It'll be uh, cutting it close. And so this is... Those are so cute. I also let the soap and clay kid let's pick the liners. Now normally I try to theme the liners around the season as well. So normally I would use more, I don't know, like fall type colors with some burnt oranges and yellows and browns and whatnot. but the kids got to select all of this this time around so I they wanted these and you know yeah we're, we're gonna do the thing I think this was one that um, I think soap and clay kid the number one picked this one out and I think this particular blend that we're working with right now is called iced woods or something and it is from Maple Street who I have actually not used, I very rarely use anything from them. They're actually a new-ish company that I'm giving a chance. And I mean, I don't know if they are new, they're just new in my life and my desire to try new things. So I love the scent blend. I've actually tested this in a soap already and it's actually a delightful, it has really good properties in the soap. And I love their, uh, um, their formulation process. And so they spend, they're very heavy on the essential oils in their fragrance oil blends and they have really good testing notes for, you know, soap and bath and, you know, those kinds of products. So I like them so far, so far so good. This particular scent blend, it's very icy and cold. And Soap Away Kid number one is just, she will forever and always, always be Elsa. Like that is her favorite thing in the whole entire world. And so it sort of made sense to me that she picked something that said iced and also made sense to me that she wanted it blue. So that was the reason for that. But it's a, uh, like like I said, it's very cold, has a little bit of a peppermint kick to it and just a little bit of sweetness. And so that's where the kind of foody, you know, blend comes in with this guy. But yeah, so these things, since we are keeping them in the containers, we're gonna keep them in the cupcake liners here and we're not unmolding them. It's not super necessary to wait 24 hours before you frost them. Now, normally for our cupcake bath bombs, if we have them in a silicone mold that we need to, you know, then take them out of the mold and, you know, do the things with, I do let them set up overnight and fully harden before I do the frosting portion. But again, since these are staying in the liner, I, it doesn't matter. You can do it right now and the bath bomb is still going to, you know, firm up underneath the frosting, underneath the bubble bath, and it will, you know, be awesome. So that's nice if you're on a time crunch and you don't have two days to make, you know, your, your bath bombs really, which is usually always the case in my life. I, I never have the time that I actually need to do stuff. So whenever I can do it all in one day, I love it. And another cool thing about these, you know, paper containers is that they will um, help the adhesion of the top of the frosting to the, um, well, to the whole unit, really. I mean, they're made to break apart, so you use a bath bomb after you, you know, make the bubble, whatever. But for shipping and transport purposes, these actually tend to stick a little bit better than the ones that we use in the silicone mold and then, you know, do the thing. But these guys are all ready to go and ready to be frosted with the bubble bath. Okay, now on to the frosting. Now we have uh, all the dry ingredients that have been mixed up in the KitchenAid there. And the liquid ingredients are here. Everything that needs to be melted has been melted. And the uh, cocoa betaine and um, 
the oils have been put into the melted oils and butters and it creates this really cool like goopy you know mess thing and that's how you know it's a good it's a good blend if it does that that kind of thickened kind of gelatinous you know thing when you put the cocoa betain in you have a good blend you're totally it's going to be a good thing for piping which is you know awesome and this uh mixture here it's going to be very dry and crumbly as all of the liquid ingredients are incorporating into the dry and once that has formed you know a couple big balls of dough essentially that's when I know it is ready to put the witch hazel in and really thin out the batch the batter to a pipeable consistency now I'm not super sure what kind of work time you have with these like if I had to give you a number I I really super couldn't I I don't know um I, I don't know I've, I've never felt like I had to rush through piping bubble bath so I would say that that's pretty good work time and I'm just adding a little bit of witch hazel in just a little bit at a time to get these to continue clumping up, this dough to continue clumping up and creating, you know, a thicker solution. And then once it really forms into a couple big balls, it then, you know, it's the final liquid stage at that point. You put a, another tablespoon or so out of a uh, witch hazel in at that point, and that's when kind of the magic happens, so to speak, and it uh, becomes more of a you know, cream cheese frosting consistency, which is good, but you see how it's smoothing out in there and the frosting itself is getting glossy, which is good. These are all good things. And then, you know, look at that. That's just beautiful. And it will continue to mix up until all the graininess really is gone from the frosting and it will be then ready to pipe at that point. So I think in total, the whipping of this is about four minutes or so when you're doing the and see that's just beautiful I love how it ribbons off of everything now this is actually a little bit too loose of a frosting this is not something that you should um, really pipe you should exactly so I have noticed it's a little bit too thin and I am going to add a little bit more kale and clay to this to give the whipped frosting some more structure so it won't be totally I don't know I don't know me and like regular frosting I never have the patience for it and I guess that's pretty well true of bubble bomb frosting as well 90% of the time I get a good frost right 90% of the time but then other times which was this right here I did not whip it enough I was impatient and it didn't quite set up the way that I wanted it to and so the cool little flowered pattern that I was wanting on the top of these I'm not gonna get because the, the batter was a little bit too loose the the frosting was a little bit too loose but that's okay because it firms up delightful re delightfully regardless of you know how thick it is when you when you pipe it and uh, that was just a recurring thing for me um, today in this process the uh, the coupler kept falling off the, of the whatever it's all thing anyway these are frosted and you know ready to be decorated and there's you know me cleaning it up on the the right hand side there kind of off camera kind of not because that one got a little bit too you know swoopy on the side and now the soap and clay kidlets are putting in the decorated tops that they have selected for their cupcake bubble bombs for their and um they're you know super adorable they each selected their own little designs and everything they drew them all out and this is the one that was going on the top of the um i guess i just frosted the, the yellow ones which is actually a butterscotch apple so the butterscotch is the yellow and then the apple on the top to show that it's a yeah it's all thing and uh yeah, see, my stupid coupler all day long with this guy was just the worst thing ever. I'm so glad that this was the test batch. So these are just all the ones that we keep for ourselves and give to, you know, our family or whatever. So it wasn't a huge deal, but, you know, it's still, it was a pain. Whatever, let's check them out. 
So now that everything has been, you know, all the little decorative, uh, decorative tops have been put in, whatever. Again, so glad these are our testers because um, my hands are all up in this. No, no, no gloves today. We're uh, running short in the COVID world. And here are the four that the soap and clay kidlets designed and the ones that we made and they are all ready to be tested and you know by the time you see this they will have been tested and we will have decided that they're awesome and they will be ready for you know you to pick up for the fall line but yeah we've got the butterscotch we've got the butterscotch apple we've got the ice winter woods and the chocolate chip cookie dough and oh my god they are so yummy these ones turned out so cute and they are definitely they smell good enough to eat i am um, really into the foodie thing right now and it seemed a perfect time to go ahead and you know put some foodie products into the line and plus it's a cupcake bath bomb why shouldn't it smell like food so i don't know which one i like better uh the soap play kidless they each designed two and i think each of them did an excellent job together as a set all four of those are just perfect so yeah if you are interested in those cupcake bubble bombs you can get them on the website at soapandplay.com they are our fall line so we will be switching it out in a couple months to get ready for christmas and if you are interested in more soapy antics subscribe to the channel we're doing this every day they're not soapy today they're self-care e uh but yeah subscribe and come back and see me again i would super appreciate it for those of you who do come back and see me again thank you so much i really appreciate you and I look forward to seeing you all again tomorrow. I don't actually see you, I, you see, it's a weird thing to say. Anyway, I will be back again tomorrow. Bye.